Hi folks, Don Bailey. Uh, well, you can see I've got my glasses on because uh, uh, our president here who's with me uh, chastised me for not having my glasses on. Please keep in mind, I don't go back there very often, I just forgot them. So, uh, but anyway, I'm going to introduce you to the real, real Tim Allen. This is not the Tim Allen you see on the TV show, but this is the real Tim Allen. So Tim, tell me, uh, and Tim, by the way, is president of the company. So Tim, how long have you been Tim Allen? I've been Tim Allen for 60 years now, Don. <laughs> That's longer than the other Tim Allen, I think, isn't it? <laughs> but anyway, uh, Tim is our president, and uh, he's done a terrific job in growing the business, and we'd like to share some things. Tim, what do you think about one of the products that we could take in the back, and maybe we could show the folks how we assemble? What, what, what kind of well, ideas have you got? You know, one of the things that every tool maker uses every day is a magnetic chuck and it's probably the most misunderstood tool back there they don't understand how they're put together a lot of guys don't understand how they work so you know to me that would be a really good idea to show the guys how a magnetic chuck is good made. idea i like it what do you say we go back and uh, let's show the folks how we put one together. Let's go. Let's yeah. do it. Just because you own the place doesn't smile. mean you don't have to worry. Oh, I got my glasses. Okay. I got them. Don't worry. All right, let's go. All right, Tim, so you want to give us an idea about how a magnetic chuck is put together and what the components are and uh, what the process is? Well, Don, we start with the pieces for our top plate. We've got our two end poles. We've got our non-magnetic stainless poles. And we've got our mild steel transfer poles here. So, so what's the idea of the stainless anyway? Well the stainless gives you the separator between your north and south pole and that's what gives you your holding power. That uh, also allows you to turn the chuck on and off. I see, if okay. You don't, if you can't cancel out the magnetism in the top plate, you can't turn it off, you'll never get your part uh, off. That, that makes sense. So after we assemble these, we alternate steel, stainless, mild steel, We've got both short and tall poles in here. We get that all assembled. We have a big fixture. We pack it in to get all those poles as tightly together as we can. And we have to weld them down the side to hold that whole lamination together. Man, I can't believe uh, all the welding you got to do on that baby. And they have to be packed tight. And when you weld them, they start to warp. So on the longer chucks, we have to weld additional bars on the back after we've straightened them. To, in order to hold them flat, and get them flat for the wow. next process. Wow. Which is to send them out for copper brazing. Wait, sorry, lunchtime. I gotta go. <laughs> okay. No, no lunch today. Sorry. No, 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 no soup for you. you. No soup for you. <laughs> All of the gaps have to be filled with copper, and the copper is what holds this whole assembly together as we get on down the Why don't you use glue or something? Why? This looks like an expensive process. Because actually if you put glue in here, it becomes a real non-conductor and you get no holding power at all. Wow. We actually attempted that at one time. It didn't work out well. So huh. we stuck with the copper brazing. That's what works. So once it's copper brazed, then what? Once it's copper brazed, we have to take this blank and we blanchard grind it all six sides to remove the weld so that we have a nice clean edge on there. So you I can see. see all the poles, all the weld has to be removed, top, bottom, all six sides, and we grind them for thickness at that point. Hmm. Wow. So now our top plate is just about ready to go to the next process, okay. which is going to be drilling. So now we've got our top plates done. They're all blanched. We know where the poles are. We have to start building our magnet box which is laminated of mild steel and permanent ceramic magnets. Hmm. When you put these magnets in there, they have to be put in north, south, north, south. So every one has to be put on there and, and checked so that you're getting the polarity of your magnets in the proper sequence because they have to alternate all the way down. So, the, so excuse me, but the, the, so the, the, the north and south pole are on the sides or on the end? On the sides. Ah. So that it transfers into these non into these magnetic poles here to transfer into the top plate of our chuck. So in theory, the thicker that the ceramic magnet is, the more strength you're going to get. Is that accurate? That's true. Beautiful. And one, you know, this is a good time to point out a lot of people are under the misconception that a fine pole is stronger than a standard pole. 
And it's really exactly the opposite in a lot of cases. A standard pole magnetic has more magnetic material in the magnet pack itself, so you get more holding power. The fine pole is really intended for very thin, small work pieces. That's ah. its best application. It's you know, a lot of times people will say, oh, gee, I need a fine pole because it's stronger. That's really not true. Huh, interesting. Good time to point that. So anyway, after we've laminated all of that together, we got all our magnets in there. Sometimes, when this gets filled, the copper brazing, these poles will move a little bit. So if your spacing isn't quite right, sometimes we have to shim on the sides of the magnets so that these poles line up perfectly with our magnetic poles in the top plate so that we get good transfer. So it's not just a production line where you just make all these things and you put no, them together. We, you have to all custom made. We don't made. just slam them together. Each one is actually hand assembled, hand fit, hand spaced so that we get the best shut off and we get the best holding power that we can attain. Wow, awesome. So after we've assembled all that, we pot it with epoxy and then we blanchard grind the top so that we've got a nice, smooth, flat surface to mate up to the underside of our top plate. I see. Before, this is another time to point out something important. When you get this all assembled, there's a tremendous amount of magnetic attraction here. If you get this magnet pack close to anything that's magnetic, they're gonna do this. And if your finger's in there, you're going to go to the clinic. I think Jim found that out, didn't yeah. he? <laughs> I, I think he might have. I think we renamed that Chuck, Death Chuck 3000. And, and, and Glenn, that's why we keep you away from this. We don't want you to hurt yourself. I you're, was warned previous not to put them near each you're, other. You're a terrific cameraman. You do all the right stuff. But when it comes to this, we need to keep you away from this. We don't want you to be losing <laughs> any fingers, fingers on it. You need your push button finger for the camera, yes, right? Okay. That's, that's something to keep in mind if you're trying to repair one of these on your own. There's just a tremendous amount of magnetic force there. You yeah. get your finger in the way, you're going to get hurt. Yeah, I, it's I, that simple. I don't think magnets get the respect that they should. I don't think people really understand how powerful magnets can be and the damage that they can do. So, I, I don't recommend you take these things apart, folks. It's just not the thing you should be doing. I'd leave that to the professionals. And especially when you get into the big guys, you know, if you got a, a six by eighteen or a twelve by eighteen, you've got this gigantic magnet pack in there you can really get. Well, you know, while you're at it, Tim, let's talk about uh, uh, the holding power per square inch. What are we looking at? Uh, any ideas to... These, a uh, standard pole like this averages about 35 pounds per square inch, measured at the center of the chuck with a one-by-one one piece of mild steel. So you could have hundreds of pounds of pressure here. Exactly. And that's, if you, you know... That's, I, that's I, not good. I just can't stress enough how badly you can get hurt. Okay, so what's all this stuff over here? Well, after we get our magnet box prepared and we've made it to our top plate, we're going to spread a little bit of graphite grease on there. We're going to assemble this in there. We have a fixture to do that so that your fingers don't get in the way. Good idea. This bushing has already been assembled into the aluminum frame here. We put an O-ring on the cam, that goes through there. This yoke goes on the inside to hold the whole assembly together. We have to put the cam link in there. That links from the cam, whoops, from the magnet box to the cam. Once we assemble that, we have a special little fixture that has a point instead of the actual cam on it. And we can spot that through the hole so that we get the best possible shut off and turn on. Okay, so let me see if I understand this. So this cam goes on the magnet pack like so. It's on the magnet pack. Like that, that whole thing goes in here. Yes, sir. And then this link is probably lined up something like that. And Correct. you have a special pin that goes in there. We have a special pin like this that has a point instead of the flat end on it. We put that through the cam hole, give it a little tap with a hammer, then we pull that link back so out. And drill and read so the you have to take hole. it back apart and drill it and then put it back together. Exactly. Wow. A lot of work. And then finally? Finally, we put the bottom plate on, get this assembled onto the underside of there, like so. 
put some sealant on there, of course. We don't want water inside. It's a good idea. Seal that up. Good idea. And when that's all assembled, then it goes into the grinding room for the final grind. It gets ground all six sides. We grind it for size. We grind it for squareness. And how close is it in squareness? Two tenths. All over. Two tenths TIR. Flat, square, parallel. And this is the finished product That's here. That's the finished product. When we're all done with grinding, it goes into our finishing department. They put the tag on. They put the rails on. They wow. proof it, wrap it, wow. pack it, get it ready to ship. Well, Tim, thanks. That was really great and informative, and uh, we've had a lot of people requesting uh, how we do this, so uh, thanks for sharing that with us. And uh, for you folks out there, if there's anything else you'd like to see, shoot us an email. We'd like to show you some other products and how they're made and how they're assembled. So hope that's informative, and Tim, thanks much. You're more than welcome. And thanks for watching, folks.